Julia's Reward by Linda Henderson For Melissa, Daniel, Noah, and Caleb, and children everywhere who are dearly loved by Jesus, God's Son. Julia was very excited as she came home from school Wednesday afternoon. Wow, you must have had a good day today, said her mother. What is making you so happy, Julia? Well, Mom, my teacher said tomorrow we will be having a spelling bee contest, and I know I'm going to win, explained Julia. Her mother smiled as she got Julia an afternoon snack. She didn't wonder if Julia's wish would come true, knowing what a good speller her daughter was. The next morning, Julia got up bright and early to get ready for school. After she got there, the day seemed to drag on and on. First, she and her classmates were told to open their science books. They then got into small groups to do an experiment. Finally, the moment came when the children were divided into two groups. A captain was chosen for each team. Julia was asked to be the captain of the red team, and Timmy was chosen to be the captain of the blues. Baseball, father, crayon, summer. One by one, somebody from each team had to sit down because they misspelled a word. Finally, there were two children left standing who had gotten each word right. Timmy, Mrs. Bright said, please spell the word believe. That was a hard one, even for a good speller like Timmy. B-E-L-E-E-V-E, -E -E -E, Timmy said, after quickly thinking about it. Timmy, you did an excellent job in our spelling bee. You will be today's second runner-up. Then, turning to Julia, who was the last in her group to still be standing, Mrs. Bright asked Julia if she would spell the same word, believe. B-E-L-I-E-B-E, -E -E, stammered Julia. Yes, that's right. You're our winner today, Julia, Mrs. Bright gleefully proclaimed. Julia's wish had come true. She had won the spelling bee, but as glad as she was to be the winner, she noticed that it didn't feel quite as good as she thought it would. In fact, by the time she got home and started telling her mother about the contest, her happy feelings about winning had all but disappeared. Mom, why don't I feel as good as I thought I would about winning the spelling bee, asked Julia. Her mother wrapped her arms around her and softly began to explain. You know, Julia, the Bible, God's love letter to us, talks a lot about rewards but they're the kind that will last forever and ever. Really? But how can anything last forever? My good feeling about winning the spelling bee only lasted for a couple of hours, Julia said. That's a very good question, Julia. Any reward we get as an earthly prize will only last for a short time. It's what we do in the light of eternity that really matters. There are those who build their houses on a rock and those who build them on sand. The rock represents Jesus. Whoever chooses to believe he's the Son of God and asks him to forgive their sins and to live in their hearts will be building their lives on the rock. 
Their lives will be strong and they won't be easily shaken. But those people who don't want to believe in Jesus are building their lives on the sand. When the strong wind blows on it and the rain beats against it, the house will collapse. That's what it's like for people who only want to live for what this world has to offer. The pressures of life will be too much for them. <clears throat> Matthew 6.19 tells us to store your treasures in heaven where they can't be destroyed by moths or rust and thieves won't be able to steal it there. But how can I have treasures in heaven, Mama? asked Julia. The Bible tells us many ways you can store up treasures in heaven. First, believe in Jesus and you will be rewarded with eternal life. That's a life that will last forever in a perfectly fun place called heaven. After you have believed in Jesus, keep on believing in him until you get to the end of your earthly life. Even though you can't see Jesus, he is always there. He is real and he can show you that he's real. He promises never to leave you or forsake you. Hebrews 13.5 When you have asked Jesus to be your friend and his spirit comes to live inside of you, there will be special things Jesus will want you to do with your life. Like what? Julia pondered. Well, most of all, he wants you to love him and love other people. But he also has given you a special ability or talent that he wants you to use. When you use your talents, it will help other people to come to know about Jesus, too. And God will reward you in heaven. Are there more ways God will reward us in heaven for things we do on earth? wondered Julia. Yes, honey, said her mom. You can pray for others and give money in secret to help poor people. When God sees what you do in secret, he promises to reward you when you get to heaven. It's not always easy to do what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus even said he wanted us to be kind to people who don't treat us right. Sometimes if you do the right thing, somebody might get mad at you. People got mad at Jesus and even hung him on a cross to die, even though he only did good deeds. There's no one else who is as good as Jesus is. He will help you do the good things he has planned for your life. And there will be a special reward for you if you do what he asks. Jesus may whisper in your heart what he wants you to do, or you can read what he says to do in the Bible. If you ever get mistreated for doing what God wants, you need to forgive those who mistreat you. But God will give you a big reward in heaven for any pain you go through on earth because you stood up for Jesus and did what was right. God wants us to share and to give to those who have less than we have. He sees what you do, even if no one else knows about it. Pleasing God is more important than pleasing ourselves or anybody else. If you see somebody in need and you pray for the person in Jesus' name, God will hear your prayers and bring help to them. Most importantly, God wants us to show love to others and to tell them about Jesus. Mom, I would like to help other children who don't have enough food to eat or don't have any toys like I have. I'm going to start saving up my allowance and give it to a place that buys food for hungry people. I also want to learn about Jesus so they can go to heaven and help I want to help others learn about him too. Can you help me find a place where I can send them the money that I'm going to save? Sure, honey. That's a great idea. 
I'm sure you will be making Jesus happy by doing that. You know, Jesus is coming back and he will give all those who are ready and waiting for him a special reward. We can be ready by choosing to keep on believing in Jesus. Showing love to people and telling them about Jesus will keep your faith muscles strong. Even if Jesus doesn't come back for another 200 years, we want to live like he could come back at any time. Jesus will never disappoint you. He loves you so much that he gave up his life for you. There's no better thing than to know him and love him. We can't earn God's love, but accepting Jesus by asking him to come into your life enables God to accept you as his child. You will get to share in the reward Jesus earned by being obedient to his Father. And that reward is the best of all, it, and the best of any reward. It's eternal life in heaven. Here's a prayer if you want Jesus to come into your heart so you can know God's love for you and go to heaven when this life is over. Dear Jesus, please forgive me for anything wrong I say, think, or do. I believe you died on a cross to pay for my sins, and I'm sorry for them. I believe God raised you from the dead and you are alive. Please come into my heart and be my Savior and Lord. I want to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.